Hi folks, I'm at Sandy's Cat Sanctuary, which is just outside Alethrigon. This is, is a new sanctuary, it's only recently opened, um, financed by a few private contributions. Um, obviously it's cost a lot of money. So far, they've literally done the concrete, they've got several containers joined together to create the actual working space and, and uh, safety areas for the different cats. They keep the kittens separate to the cats and that sort of thing. Um, there's quite a lot of land here. It's all fenced off so the, so the older cats can be allowed out. They can roam around and still be kept within the sanctuary. But obviously this place needs, um, needs funding to continue. There's quite a few cats here already. Most of these were the initial batch that were rescued from Teke uh, Mosque where lots of cats used to hang around. Um, apparently a few weeks ago there was quite a few cats that were found dead. Initially they thought they had been poisoned but it actually turned out they had all been kicked to death. So this is the grim side of Cyprus and this is the actual reality of animal abuse that does happen behind the scenes here. Um, and thankfully, people like this, animal lovers, who go out their way to fund this place, to give their time and effort for free, um, uh, hopefully will be changing things. They obviously need contributions, they need volunteers to come and help. It's about 10 minutes further inland from Alethri Gorn. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to arrange sort of on-site accommodation so volunteers can maybe come for a few days or weeks at a time and stay on site which would be ideal we'll see how it goes um, and uh, in a little while I'm going to be speaking to Elias who actually deals with the day-to-day -day running of the place and I'll show you some of the cats some photos and some footage of the actual place okay Elias yes, um, thanks for giving me a few minutes I'd like everybody to know exactly what the sanctuary is about and how they can help. So, how did you first get involved with the cat sanctuary? With the sanctuary itself or with yes, cats? Both. The sanctuary, I mean, it's not an idea we came up with because there was no way of finding funding. Okay. Um, I'd been feeding the cats at Tech Care for years on my own. And then, luckily, or unluckily, <laughs> I met Madam, Bob, uh, Madam Joy down there one uh, afternoon and she taught me the art of delegation. Uh -huh, right. <laughs> we teamed up from then onwards and we were looking after tech care in various colonies in Larnaca until, I can't remember when it was, it must be almost two years ago now, we met Sue uh, who had the idea of the shelter and we told her no chance, we just can't afford it. And with one way or another, she managed to come up with the original funding to start getting it set up. We're not quite finished yet. We're still short of quite a bit, but we're getting there. It's, we're almost at the functional stage. It's full of cats right now through necessity. Right. Uh, not because it's ready to, to function as a shelter. Okay. So go forward from here. What do you need help wise? Help, well, the most important thing for us after what happened at Tech Care that forced us to start relocating the cats, we need to move the cats from there as quickly as possible, right. the remaining cats. Okay. Uh, we're still talking about 100, 150 cats that need relocating. Unfortunately, we haven't got the front roofing ready, which is the main feeding area, water, sleeping area for all the cats once they're going to be released on the property. Uh, we need desperate safety measures as in a retaining wall at the back reinforced fencing um, a ditch halfway around the property everything that needs doing to prevent uh, a flood i didn't mention that but we were flooded it was three weeks ago now and where you're standing was knee deep in mud and hip high in water it just came straight through the cats were climbing on the fences inside the containers you see the watermark on the container how high the water came yeah. Um, luckily, Joy was here with another two volunteers, <laughs> and they managed to rescue all the kittens in the kitten area. Right. <laughs> so uh, it could have been. It, it's terrible for us because it set us back two, three months. It's gonna cost at least two and a half to three thousand to repair the damage that's been done for the 
top fencing, bottom fencing, underneath the containers, the blocks were broken in the kitten area and underneath the isolation unit. Um, funding apart from that, every single container you see here still needs um, insulation for the, to keep the cats warm in the winter and cool in the summer. The clinic is nowhere near ready at all. We haven't got any, apart from, we've only got a surgery table, that's it. We haven't got cupboards, we haven't got equipment, we haven't got anything else in there at all. Okay, so you you need support with funding? We're desperate, and that's not, not mentioning the day-to-day -day costs. Uh, here, as things stand now, we need about a thousand euros a month just for food and water. Right. Um, not to mention the cats that we've keep in cages in recovery and isolation. Uh, the nappies uh, and the medications it's just it's costing us about 1500 euros a month running costs right and obviously you need more hands-on help uh, what that's a really desperate situation right now for the whole week uh, myself and joy are having to be here every day because mm -hmm. we've only got two regular volunteers uh, regular as in we've got one volunteer for wednesday mornings and we've got one regular for sunday mornings any other volunteer that comes here is on the off chance. We haven't got any other regulars at all. Okay, so if I put in the link below, some contact details, anybody who wishes to offer their services, or maybe They're more if, than somebody welcome. Wants to, if somebody <laughs> wants to come from abroad and spend a few weeks here working and... We working. haven't got a place ready for them here now, but we're planning on doing that. But we have got places local where they can stay. Okay, so it is possible for a cat lover to come and spend Definitely. A, a few weeks I'm sure Literally Joy would uh, agree to put somebody up for a, a while. If they couldn't, I'll find somewhere else, no problem. Will they have any time off to go to the beach, do you think, in the meantime? Uh, it depends what sort of a mood I'm in. Okay, <laughs> all right. And as far as funding goes, again, yep. you do have a PayPal account that people can we donate to. We have a PayPal to. account, so um, I put that in the which is the easiest method. Below. Yep. And what I was going to ask is, do you have or will you have a facility where people can perhaps adopt a cat? We remotely have... and fund the cat and yep. ah you and, mean a, and help a remote adoption yes we it can be done we i don't think we've had one or two instances in the last few years where people have shown some sort of they make a small donation to but the problem with that is uh, we can't keep a cat in the shelter just because it's been adopted from abroad okay. if a good a good home is found it found for it here or abroad okay then it will definitely get a so that, we, so we do prefer can, a permanent adoption so it's it would be will be that they would foster a cat in the meantime that's it okay yeah. yes all right so the plan is is this is basically transit for cats they come this here, is the halfway home halfway house um, there is cats that will never get adopted um, for one reason or another there's We've got FIV cats who will probably spend the rest of their lives here with us. Right. But they've got 5,000 square meters outside to play around in. They've got warm containers to sleep in. Um, they're going to be well looked after. Um, also, I mean, there's cats that people class as bog standard. Oh, it's just a plain ginger cat or it's just a plain tabby cat. Right. A lot of people are looking for something different, something special. The good thing is if we can get more visitors down here. Right. When a visitor comes, as soon as a cat jumps on them, it doesn't matter what it, what it looks like, yes. uh, it's really easy to fall in love with them. Okay. They're all really friendly. I mean, we had a lady sitting there the other day, I think she was swamped with about 15 cats on her shoulders, on her legs everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, hope that uh, a lot of people will see this. Uh, they'll have contact details, whether they want to help, support, whatever whatever they can anything uh, and we're, we're even happy with donations of bedding nappies uh, medications it doesn't necessarily have to be a cash donation right uh, there's things that we need here all the time absolutely okay thank you very much Elias. thank you so this is an abandoned building just next to Teke mosque where cats began to be abandoned a few years ago and now there's hundreds of them around here and a little while back quite a few were found kicked to death here so the people at the sanctuary Elias actually comes here feeds them looks after them and they're hoping to gradually take them all to the sanctuary and then gradually try to uh, have them adopted and rehomed <laughs>